Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio, currently living on board the International Space Station. I was born and raised in Waterbury, Connecticut, attended Chase Grammar School and Crosby High School. I spent a lot of time playing football at Hamilton Park and Municipal Stadium. And I remember going to the fast food places up on Lakewood Road and at Chase Avenue. We used to even go down to the Green because there was a great pizza place down there. And I've been to the Palace Theater, of course, many years ago. I'm telling you these things because I want you to know that I grew up in the same place that you are growing up. I went to the same schools that you are going to. Of course, things change, but opportunities are always available to everyone. After I graduated from Crosby High School, I went to the University of Connecticut in Stores, where I received an engineering degree. My first job was with Hamilton Standard in Farmington, Connecticut, designing guidance systems. And while working there, I saw an advertisement in a magazine saying that NASA was accepting applications for new astronauts. So I decided to send in an application. I did not get the job as an astronaut, but they offered me an engineering job down at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. So I moved to Houston to pursue this great opportunity. I worked on the space shuttle program, verifying software, developing procedures for the crew, and I continued to apply for the astronaut job. And then in 1992, I made the final 100 and went through a series of interviews, but I was not accepted. So I kept applying, and again in 1994, I was interviewed, not accepted. So I kept trying, and again in 1996, I was interviewed, and I was accepted into the 16th class of astronauts. It was nine years from my first application to the time that I was accepted as a NASA astronaut. And even if I never got accepted as an astronaut, I still had a great job at NASA as an engineer. There are so many interesting jobs in the fields of science, technology, and engineering. Keep that in mind as you go through school. Now, I've been an astronaut for almost 18 years. I've been living up here since November 8th of last year and will return around May 14th. It's my fourth mission to the International Space Station. I flew on the Space Shuttle Atlantis, Discovery, and Endeavor. But those were short trips of only about two weeks long to build and assemble the ISS. Part of my responsibility on these missions was to do spacewalks. I actually bolted together parts of the space station and built this, helped build this huge facility. It was a great job. Here I am floating next to a spacesuit we were wearing during our spacewalks. Do you know that outside the temperature in the shade is minus 250 and in the sun is plus 300 degrees in the sun? This suit protects us from the temperature swings and the vacuum of space and it was designed and built in Connecticut. So now I'm living up here. We're working on research, performing all kinds of experiments. We're testing new vaccines, developing new technologies, searching for dark matter, monitoring changes in the Earth, and much, much more. Space Station's already 15 years old and will operate for at least another 10 years. And NASA's building a new vehicle to go to the moon or an asteroid or Mars. There's even three or four co companies building launch vehicles to go into orbit. So there are a lot of opportunities for new engineers, scientists, doctors, astronauts, technicians, and much more. And someday in your lifetime, people will walk on another planet, the moon, an asteroid, or Mars. I think it's pretty exciting. So thanks for listening to me. Now, let's get to some of your questions. Now, first thing I want to demonstrate is that I am actually floating in space. It's kind of hard because I'm just hanging here, but I could easily... I could easily just as well hang upside down, if that makes you... If that makes it more interesting, I could hang this way. There is no up or down in space. I could hang on the ceiling. I could sleep on the ceiling. I could hang on the floor upside down. I could walk on the floor. I could do anything I want. Floating is fantastic. It's one of the most exciting things to do up here. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, so now this is probably more comfortable for everybody, so I'll stay this direction. All right, so before I get to the questions, I want to say thank you to uh, some different organizations. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to the Waterbury Police Activity League and the City of Waterbury Education Department. Of course, that includes uh, also Mayor Neil O'Leary and the Superintendent of Schools, Kathleen Olette. And of course, most of all, I'd like to thank, thank Lieutenant Robert Sazowskis. Without all his hard work, this, none of this would have been possible getting together with all the different schools and getting a chance to talk to you. So thanks. Say everybody should say thanks to Lieutenant Robert Sazowskis. In fact, let's give him a big round of applause right now, and I'll pause. Okay. Now, we've got a lot of different schools in the uh, audience, from what I'm told. We've got all the high schools. Crosby, Kennedy, Wilby, and Taft High School as well as the Waterbury Career Academy High School. We got the middle schools, North End, 
West Side and Wallace up on the east side. Elementary schools, Walsh, Wendell Cross, Reagan, Polk, Chase, Washington, Elementary, and of course, Hopeville and Tinker. The Waterbury Arts Magnet School is going to be there with us. The uh, Enlightenment School, Gil Martin, Reed, Maloney Magnet School, the Children's Community School, and State Street School. So sounds like you got a pretty big bunch of folks there, and uh, I really appreciate you all coming out to uh, hear me today. All right, so here's some of the questions that Lieutenant Robert Sazowskis sent to me. And let's go through them. This is from Michael Marchetti from Rotella School. He'd like to ask, how does it feel? How did it feel when you blasted off into space and can you describe the experience? Okay, so I have now blasted off the planet four times. Three times in a space shuttle, and one time in a Russian Soyuz rocket. And I could tell you, the space shuttle would jump off the launch pad. Its acceleration was much, much higher than the Soyuz rocket. And the first stage of the space shuttle was very, very bumpy. It was uh, the best analogy I can come up with. It's like if you were driving a motorcycle down a train track, which of course you shouldn't do, but that's how bumpy. You can imagine how bumpy that would be. And that's what the first two minutes of the space shuttle ride felt like. Then once those solid rocket boosters fell off, it was a very, very smooth ride. Now the Soyuz, on the other hand, it started off slow, but it was also very, very smooth the whole ride. The most dynamic part of the Soyuz launch was when second stage engine stopped and we were kind of thrown forward in our seat and the third stage ignited and we were kind of pushed back in our seat. It was a very, very dynamic phase and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. So that was a great question. Thank you. Next question is from Natalie from Polk Elementary School. She'd like to ask, what is the most interesting or favorite project that you were working on on the ISS? That's a good question. We're doing a lot of research up here. We're doing research on uh, new vaccines. We're doing research in robotics. Uh, we're doing research on fluid flows, new materials. We're doing, we even had some ants up in space uh, here a few weeks ago, and that was pretty fun to watch the ants crawling around up here in zero G. But uh, probably the most interesting thing for me is uh, we have an experiment up here called Sphere Satellites. And there's these small satellites about the size of a basketball, and we have three of them. And we run different kinds of experiments with them where they actually, these satellites actually fly around inside the space station. And they do different things. They kind of track each other. They kind of have little races with each other. And they do all these different things. And uh, that's kind of one of my areas that I went to school for, for, college. So it's interesting to see how these satellites control themselves. And it's kind of neat to have these little satellites flying around inside the space station. One of the concepts of these satellites is uh, that we're going to put a face recognition on it so that maybe the little satellite can follow us around the space station. Maybe it can hold our tools for us. Maybe it can hold our computer for us. Maybe it could talk to us and, and tell us uh, different pieces of information that we want as we work up here in the space station. So I really enjoy working uh, with the satellites and uh, we'll continue to do that for a few more months. Next question is... Uh, the fourth grade from the fourth grade class of the children's community school they would like to ask how difficult it is it to fall asleep among the stars and all the excitement <laughs> yes I am among the stars but I'm not much closer to the stars than you are let me give you an example here okay so here's the earth the earth is spinning but really I'm not much farther above the earth I'm not that close. I'm not much closer to the stars than you are. If you, if you, if in this relative position, I mean, I would probably be about the thickness of my finger above the Earth. I'm only about 250 miles above the Earth, where the stars are billions and billions of miles away. So, even though I may am in space, I'm still very, very, very far from the stars. All right. But the question was, how does it? What's it like to fall asleep up here? And sleeping up here is fantastic. Uh, it's like the world's softest bed, if you will. Hold that. You could sleep upside down again. There's no reason why you can't sleep like this. You could sleep hanging on the ceiling. You could sleep on the wall. You could sleep on the floor. You could sleep any which way. And what we do is we just have a sleeping bag. We just hang the sleeping bag on the wall. We crawl into the sleeping bag. We zip it up and we sleep. And it's very, very comfortable. 
I'm, I, uh, I think that um, when I get back to Earth, it's going to be a little difficult for me to sleep in a bed because of uh, all that gravity. I'm not used to it anymore, and it's going to take a while to get used to it again because sleeping up here is very, very comfortable. So that's a really good question. Kevin from Tinker School would like to ask, what do you do to make time pass when you're not exercising and not working? Well, that's a good question because we do work a lot. We work, oh, 8 to 10, 12 hours a day. And we also exercise a lot, <clears throat> about two or three hours a day. So when we're not doing that, I like to look out the window. Uh, there's uh, lots of great things to see out the window of the earth. We have a uh, what's called a cupola, and it's like a, almost like a glass bottom boat. It points down at the earth, and we go in there and we look out the windows, and we can see 360 degrees around us, and we can see straight down. So it's great views of the earth. At night, I like to uh, look for lightning storms. Big storms over Africa have a lot of lightning. It seems uh, there's very violent storms over Africa, and I love watching the lightning. And the lightning just kind of dances all over the planet, and it's uh, a lot of fun to watch. In the daytime, we go over all, we go over basically all the countries of the world at one time or another, pretty much. And I like to see if I can identify, of course, the countries or the cities that we're flying over, because it's not easy. Uh, looking at a globe or looking at a map is a lot easier than looking at the real Earth, because there's no lines on the real Earth. It's kind of hard to tell when you look down to see. Okay, is I'm looking at the Middle East. I know is that Saudi Arabia or is that a, a different country next to you? It's hard to tell where one country ends and another one starts. But I really do enjoy just looking at the earth in my spare time. Now, talking about exercising a little bit, we do exercise a lot because we're not using our muscles up here. Uh, there's no gravity to, uh, to provide resistance. We don't have to walk around. We could just float. You know, I could just float like this and not use any of my muscles and be very, very comfortable. I don't have to walk. If I want to move, all I have to do is use one little finger or just push off slightly and I'm moving. I don't have to walk. So your muscles get weak. It's kind of like if you stayed in bed for six months. If you stayed in bed for six months, your muscles would get very, very weak. Your bones would get smaller and it wouldn't be very healthy. So it's the same thing for us. We can't do that. So we have to exercise. We run on a treadmill, but we have to use a bungee. We have a harness and then these bungees are strapped down to the treadmill. And then we run on this treadmill as these bungees pull us down hard. It's not very comfortable, but it works real well. We have an exercise bike. We ride on the exercise bike. It's not much different than an exercise bike you might see uh, in a gym or at home. And then of course we have a weightlifting machine. It's a very specialized weightlifting machine because we're in a weightless environment. So it uses air pressure to provide resistance as we push the bar, it provides resistance against us. So exercising is very, very important up here and we do uh, about two or three hours a day of exercise. Exercise is also very important on the earth. Even uh, and I highly recommend everybody uh, play or exercise every day. It's a lot of fun and it's good for you. All right, here's a question from Lieutenant Robert Sazowskis of the Waterbury Police Activity League. Please describe your experience attending the Waterbury Public School System and what you can remember doing as a child in school that led and prepared you for your successful career. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, like I said, I attended uh, Chase Grammar School and Crosby High School, and I can remember when I was in Chase School, fifth or sixth grade, and uh, that's when it really started to hit me that I was getting very, got very excited about when the science teacher would talk about uh, about space or about airplanes or about spaceships or rockets or something like that. It really drew my attention. I was just naturally attracted to that kind of subject, and I was also starting to learn that I was pretty good at math. I, just had a talent for math. So then when I went to high school, my teacher saw and recognized that I had this math skill and that I was interested in science, so they recommended I become an engineer. I, when I was in high school, I'm like, what do I want to be when I grow up? What do I go to college for? So they recommended I go to school as an engineer. And so I did. And so based on the recommendation of my high school teachers. So I, had a, I think I had a really good experience in both Chase and Crosby High School, and I had a lot of teachers to help me out. But it wasn't always good. Uh, I can remember when I was in Crosby High School, I had a teacher, and she did not think I was uh, very, I was smart enough to take an advanced math class. And I tell you, when she told me, no, I can't take the advanced math class, that was, uh, that was actually, it didn't bring me down, it actually motivated me more. Because when somebody tells me I can't do something, it motivates me more and makes me want to even try harder. So don't 
even though sometimes folks think, oh, you can't do something, don't let them tell you what you can and cannot do because you could probably do just about anything if you work hard enough. And so what led to my successful career? Well, that's a good question. Uh, three things, hard work, hard work, hard work, and a lot of luck. I guess that's four things. But you have to work hard. If you want to achieve a goal, you have to work hard. You could say, well, I hope to be lucky and win the lottery, or I hope to be lucky and get, uh, uh, and get become a professional uh, athlete, or I hope to get lucky and become an astronaut. Well, chances are it's, you're, it's not going to work just, you, just relying on luck. You need a lot of hard work. If you want to be a professional athlete, or if you want to be an astronaut, or if you want to be an engineer, or if you want to go to college and graduate with a, with a degree of some kind and get a good job, it's going to take hard work. That's just plain and simple. Now, the way I always thought about it is, well, you could work hard while you're in school and then have a good life for the rest of your life after you get out of school, or you could work hard your whole life struggling and trying to get by. And I chose just to go to school and work hard and then have a good career the rest of my life. And I think it worked out pretty good. That's all the questions I have right now. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And uh, I look forward to visiting Waterbury real soon. We'll talk to you later.